Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is an English translation of the Majlis of Hazrat Mawlana Qamaru Zamaa Sahib Damad Barakah to whom which took place on Saturday morning at the residence of Hazrat Wala, Saturday, the 27th of Zulkada, 1444, corresponding with the English date, 17th of June, 2023. Hazrat Wala is saying, we just came back now from Bhopal and on the Safar, I've really uh, benefited and le learned tremendously. We went to these places, but there's no really what we would say uh, pomp and glory but together with that I mean they ruled etc but what what type of Deen Dari and uh, religiosity uh, they, they ruled and they lived with now Allah Ta'ala also gives that type of to, uh, to tawfiq that a person is ruling and running some place but together with that together with Deen You know, Hazrat Wala is speaking about an incident about the, uh, one of the Nawabs that he s asked or somebody asked, uh, he asked somebody who is uh, a day youth, uh, what we would say a kakul, who, who is that? So he says that that person who goes uh, in public in front of everyone uh, displaying uh, his wife. So when the Nawab heard this year, he realized that was for him. He was not upset. Neither did he put that person into uh, imprisonment or into jail, but rather immediately there and there, he put his wife into Parda, but to such an extent that thereafter nobody even had seen what we would say something as her finger. Hazrat Mawlana Shah Wasiullah Sahib had an amazing type of i'tidal with him. On one occasion, uh, Makbul came and he had something else, extra piece on, etc. So Hazrat Wala then said, Mawlana Shah Wasiullah Sahib, that Kamru Zama, referring to Makbul, that Kaega Hamara or Penega Tumara, that will he eat ours and then wear yours. Now, now that was something very uh, uh, great that Hazrat Mawlana Shah Wasiullah Sahib said, I mean, you're saying that to your son-in-law, that listen, he's eating mines and he's wearing yours, meaning he wanted the child to come on tawassut. But in the same breath, he had so much of i'tidal that, قُلْ مَنْ حَرَّمَ زِينَةَ اللَّهِ اللَّتِي Who can make haram that which Allah Ta'ala has made permissible? However, a person must stay within the boundaries. In the kitab that I'm reading presently, Hazrat Wala is saying, we all read the start of how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam herded the animals, uh, he was a shepherd, etc. But we do not re read that path towards the end of his life that how did he then rule Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala an kept on de kept on delaying and for three years he did not have sharbat Hazrat Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha seeing her father in that type of taklif and pain Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam says to her oh my beloved daughter listen after this day your father will see no difficulty today Every person wants to live in this life of uh, pleasure, comfort and luxury. So when we're eating and we're drinking, there should be no type of uh, exaggeration. And we need to understand that we are the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and understand the adabul mu'asharat, uh, our social dealings. This is also a part of our deen. How would we stand and how would we sit and how do we react and uh, our akhlaq with people? 
in one majlis and a gathering there, Ali radiallahu ta'ala arrives, Hazrat Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala then seats him. And after this takes place, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam becomes so pleased. But it takes a person of honor to recognize the next person of uh, honor. Now, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam was so pleased with this year. Was this not the seerat of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam? On one occasion, we went to uh, Kopa Ganj. And this is about 10 kilometers from Fatapur. Myself and Bai Sahib, Kari Mubin Sahib, Hazrat Wala is saying, we were now going to go, we were going to leave. And at that time, somebody gave a bicycle. And that also not uh, for good, but just to use to go from here and to get to our destination. But when Hazrat Mawlana Shah Wasiullah Sahib came to know about this, it brought so much of happiness to him. Now you need to know that we were their uh, son-in-laws. We were the son-in-laws there in the family. And I can't tell you the amount of du'as that he gave for that. On one occasion, Hazrat Manana Shah was see you, you know, imtihans used to come. And he said, listen, when you go home, what happens? Because you go with Sayyid Abdul Haq. Now he was such a lover of Hazrat Manana Shah was see you, and prepared to sacrifice practically everything. So what do you do once you reach there and from there to get to your own home, you must be asking this one and that one, isn't it? So I said, no, Hazrat. From there, I go walking. I can't tell you the amount of happiness this brought to Hazrat Marana Shah Wasiullah Sahib. Now, Tariq, Mitani ka naam hai. It is the path of self-effacement, annihilation of the self, complete and total humility. For a person to ask, it, it is disgraceful. He should ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he's saying that Qamr Zama, he was so happy that I did not ask anyone for that. Whereas those people were there and they would have even done it. But I did not even ask, rather I took a walk from there. So I am saying to my own people also, they should remember this year that asking is disgraceful. My own family people that are sitting here, I'm telling them this. Tariq mitane ka naam hai. When a person humbles themselves completely and totally. You know, what do I tell you? What do we talk about this knowledge or this or that or the other? A person just becomes a little bit sick and then he cannot do anything whatsoever. Hazrat Shah Hakim uh, Mustafa Saab. Uh, I mean, he had his kitabs. Uh, al qawlul Jawahir and Ma'ul Laham etc. the books that he compiled when he was uh, uh, had a stroke he was not well he lost all his health but after some considerable amount of time that elapsed and passed such a stage reached where his health improved little by little slowly slowly and he was able to recite Surah Fatiha and he was able to now start eating etc. It was such a happy moment and occasion for him. He was a man of prominence and he had wealth. In thanksgiving to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he invited the people and he fed them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me health. The love for the dunya is the root of all evil. You know, Hazrat Manana Shah Wasiullah Sahib, his kurta was not even that of the full length. It was quite short. It was only after Malvi Irshad came and then he sent a message, etc. That after that, maybe there could have been a longer type of kurta. Now, you know, we went to uh, Bhopal. So, you know, something here very, very uh, important because we went to Bhopal. We seen everything here. And so let me tell you about this here. about the saintly lady in Bhopal. Let's try to get the name here for you.
Nawab Sultan Jaha Begum Bhopal. This, this is the saintly lady that uh, we are speaking uh, about. Now, her speech at the time of the ascension of Nawab Hamidullah. Now, the speech with Begum delivered on the occasion of the ascension of Nawab Hamidullah Khan to the throne is a reflection of her religious life. Now, listen to this. Over 25 years have passed since absolute, the absolute master, referring to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he had handed the government of Bhopal to me. I considered myself to be a trustee of the dominion and made uh, the success of my subjects my afterlife. Nonetheless, it is possible that I may have fallen short in carrying out important responsibilities of the government and thus and this, <clears throat> thus, and thus may have hurt the heart of someone. On this occasion, I ask such people to pardon me. I am convinced that they will pardon me and will thereby be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I had to bear continuous tragedies in the last two years. Although I resorted to patience, after considering them to be uh, the decrees of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a unique condition has developed in my heart. Uh, I am sure it will affect the government. This is why I decided to resign from this heavy responsibility and to hand it over, uh, meaning the reign, uh, to my heir and deputy. I will then spend the rest of my days in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's remembrance and in serving the weaker sex. I now bid farewell to you as a ruler of Bhopal and I am extremely pleased to hand over the government to my dear son. Nawab Saulat Iftikhar ul Mulk Bahadur, I now happily appoint you as the chairman and hope you adhere strictly to all the rules and injunctions of the Quran. Allahu Akbar. Just look at how she's handing over the rule from herself to her son in what a religious way. I hope you will pay particular attention to this verse at all uh, uh, all the time. In Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsan wa ita'i dil qurba wa yanha anil fahshai wal munkar wal bagh ya'idhukum la'allakum tadhakkaroon. Allah enjoins justice, the doing of good and giving to one's king's folk. He forbids indecency, all that runs counter to reason and from rebellion. He admonishes you so that you may take heed. The appointment to the throne was then completed. The Begum raised her hands and made this dua, Rabbi, awzi'ni an ashkura ni'mataka allati an'amta alayya wa ala walidayya. وَأَنْ أَعْمَلَ صَالِحًا تَرْضَى وَأَدْخِلْنِي بِرَحْمَتِكَ فِي عِبَادِكَ الصَّالِحِينَ Okay, actually there. وَأَصْلِحْ لِي فِي ذُرِّيَّتِي إِنِّي تُبْتُ إِلَيْكَ وَإِنِّي مِنَ ال Muslimin. The moment Nawab Saab came into power, his son, Hassan, he established various departments as per current needs. He appointed ministers to each department. A state council committee was established for different departments to consult each other. Now this is the type of religiousness that the saintly lady of Bhopal had. Now today what's happening? Today there is so much of progress when it comes to ilm and knowledge but there is complete and utter deterioration when it comes to that of the internal referring to the heart. I mean even there now presently the biggest hospital that's there you know if the, the seed is put on a good note and the intentions are good then only good would be seen you know we go here and we go there and people show us different different things I mean I went there and I seen 
Masajid after Masajid. In fact, Siratun Nabi uh, that was published, it was done first at the hands of this saintly woman in Bhopal. I even brought a copy of that. Our Hazrat Mawlana Shah Wasiullah Sahib in our Nisab taught us Tariqul Khulafa. Some person came, uh, came along and they said, Hazrat Mawlana Shah Wasiullah Sahib teaches Tariq as well. Now you tell me, if a person doesn't know the Tariq of his forefathers, then what will he know? What will he know about the history of the past of this Deen of ours? You know, my Saeed was telling me, Hazrat Wala is saying, uh, he is staying outside. He is staying uh, in foreign, not in, not in the Indo Park here. And he says, regarding other people, that they take the Quran and Majid and they have it in front of them. And our people then ask them, I mean, you are with the Quran. And they say that we take out so many historical facts from the Quran and it helps us tremendously. You know, this, this particular uh, incident here of this uh, lady, this Nawab, I was writing this year, what, 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 what could I do and what could I say? I was in Lucknow and I was writing this year and putting it as part of my kitab. I was at Siddiqa's place and on one side I was doing this and on the other side things that were beyond our capacity we could not do, we, which was out of our control, meaning Hazrat Wala is referring to the mother of Abdullah who was then uh, uh, struggling and battling it in her last uh, few days, which, which we would say. So at that time there, Hazrat Wala is saying that I was busy putting this year in my uh, kitab. Women folk also done great, great uh, works and achieved tremendously. I've seen so much and I've come. Allah Ta'ala has created in these women folk such type of capacity. Therefore, do not even, do not leave your women folk just like that. Meaning, the pious, saintly woman, our women folk of the past achieved so much. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised Hazar Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha when she asked, she said, he said to her that you may wear, not a problem, that's garment, the outfit, whatever it was. However, do not let it be a means that you look down upon then on others. Then you see another narration where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is advising her that continue wearing the garment and do not Take it off me not, meaning do not throw it away or abandon those clothes and garments until that time when it is not completely torn and uh, has become completely patched. Now just look at that. The talim was that of uh, the leeway and uh, permissibility. Jawaz, talim jawaz ka or tarbiyat ihtiyat ka. But the upbringing that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was giving was that of precaution. There was a buzruk and he had these goats and sheep etc. He gave the order there that listen I want you people to distribute all of this. Nevertheless at night now when he wakes up he hears one of these goats bleating and then he says now how is this? Didn't I tell you people to distribute everything? And then they said, Hazrat, what to do? We kept this one for your grandson that, I mean, it can play in the yard and we will bring it up and maybe even at Qurbani time, then we could slaughter it. Then he says, look at his hal now. Ye hal ta. But lao, apne rab se rozi kese mangu? Now tell me, how do I ask my Allah for rozi? Now I've got something. This was the hal and the spiritual state of our Buzurgan Edeen. Now, this is not necessary for everyone, but I'm trying to explain to you these things. Now, our Deen is so simple to the best of your ability and capacity. Always adopt simplicity in your clothing, in your food, in your drink, 
and exercise ihtiyat and precaution you know khune dil peene ko lagte jigar gaane ko yahi riza milti hai jana teri diwane ko we have to make mujahada you have to undergo some type of sacrifice then you will achieve something you know for sometimes for a simple uh, sanad what and what type of sacrifices people undergo just to get one type of certificate and page however for the jannat that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised us we not prepared to undergo any type of sacrifice whatsoever you know hazrat marana shah wasiul sahab used to quote on these people that used to come you know i mean they used to come Now, obviously, sometimes when you want to meet a person, they busy or this or that or the other, due to which these people used to become angered, or they would go away or whatever it was. On those occasions, Hazrat Muhammad Shah Wasiullah Sahab used to say, "Now tell me, this very same person now goes to the court, and if he has to wait in the line there, and if the case is delayed, or this or that or the other, whatever it is, he will take it in his stride, but." when it comes to saintly people or religious people then they are not prepared to make any type of sacrifice whatsoever so do not harm and inconvenience anyone in any way la darar wa la dirar fi al-islam hazrat tanwi gave a bayan on this year hazrat marana shah wasil asaf used to tell us this for three long hours now tell me is this not from the buniyadi and fundamental ahadith of islam that do not harm yourself and do not harm others do not allow harm to come to you and do not harm others now it is from the objectives of a person that he stays with sukoon and he does not bring harm upon himself hazrat maulana shah wasiullah sahab spoke about the same topic in aligarh we have the knowledge but we just need to pay a little attention allah taala keep us established and firm on the deen what is the deen and what is the sharia telling us sheikh qawamuddin mi goyad mayar e kar bas ye shay ast kitabullah wa sunnat rasul wa sirat salaf hazrat maulana shah wasiullah sahab used to relate this to us so much so much am i just uh saying it like that did i learn it no we heard it so many times that it has become now zabani and we know it sheikh qawamuddin used to say that the foundation of this matter of ours is based on three quran the sunna and the life and the sirat of the pious predecessors how did they live and how did they practice quran and hadith I was just reading now I have the kitab ya ar-rahiq al-maktum ghair muqallid alim has uh, written but it was appreciated uh, amongst the arab as well so we read always the first the start of it or uh, of the sirat we learn about this and that and the other but we don't see the end of the sirat just go through the end and see what is the nichor the labb el ubab uh the crux and the essence of all of this year that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam look at those last few chapters go through it nevertheless you know hazrat maulana shah wasiullah sahab used to we used to sit there and then in the breakfast what was it he would just take his hand take a piece of roti a small piece and put some aloo in then give one lukma and that was it it was over and then nothing after that right up to lunch in fact i had to be right there doing this doing that because i was now then to present the kitab allah taala you know what can i say kare hato ne islah kiya very coarse in hard hands made islah of uh, this hazrat wala is referring to himself of myself Allah Taala give us the tawfiq and the hidayat of keeping the sirat in front of us. 
Nevertheless, we went to this historic place, Bhopal. So accordingly, I spoke about one of these saintly ladies from uh, Bhopal. If there was anything of uh, exaggeration or uh, added extra or this or that, Allah Ta'ala forgive me for that. And Allah Ta'ala accept it. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta sami wal alim wa tub alayna innaka anta tawabur rahim bi hurmati Sayyidin Nabihi al-Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.